going to war, you're going to get one. Knock it the cards, the drugs, from my generation, I'll take the fall. The saints, the cross the nation, and it's a sex, the gods, the freaks, the frauds, the Welcome everyone to Reliving the War episode 62 and welcome to the 16th of December 1996. It's the night after In Your House It's Time. The WWF are live in Tampa, Florida, while WCW is live from Pensacola, Florida. Hopefully you already watched the In Your House It's Time video I uploaded last week and you're all caught up on the results. Let's get started with the first 60 minutes of WCW Nitro. Tony and Larry welcome us to Monday Nitro as usual, but the NWO's music plays in the arena and out comes Eric Bischoff, Ted DiBiase and Vincent. Tony and Larry are forced to give up their positions at the commentary table and Bischoff welcomes the fans to NWO Nitro before letting us know that WCW champion Hulk Hogan is in the building tonight. Psychosis got a shot at Steve Regal's TV title and this was a great opening matchup. The competitors were given around 10 minutes here and they both benefited from the extra TV time. Regal ended up winning the match via submission. Do yourself a favour and go back and watch this opener. Chavo Guerrero then took on Big Bubba and normal service had resumed. Big Bubba gets the win with a boss man slam but to be fair, Chavo got in quite a lot of offence. Sonny Ono then gets interviewed and he's brought Masahiro Chono with him. Ono says he's been negotiating a new Japan contract for his client but Chono surprises everyone when he shows off his NWO shirt. Masahiro Chono is now part of the New World Order and this was the genesis of the NWO Japan faction. Chono gives Sonny a good rattling before making his way down to the ring. He has a match tonight against Chris Jericho and that encounter came to an end when Jericho got tied up in the ropes and Chono wouldn't stop beating up Y2J. The referee disqualified the newest member of the New World Order. A lengthy recap of last week's Roddy Piper shenanigans was then played for viewers at home and then we got an interview with the four horsemen minus Chris Benoit. Chris and Nancy have been living it up in Germany and Arn Anderson tells Kevin Sullivan that he'll help them end his broken heart tonight by leaving him with a broken body on Nitro. The Enforcer vs the Taskmaster is gonna happen a little later on. Nature Boy Ric Flair seems to be fine with Nancy and Chris's relationship but Deborah again rips in the woman by calling her Nasty Nancy. Debra also says that Chris Benoit tried to get it on with her but she only goes for real men, real men like Steve Mongo McMichael. Mongo tells Arn he's gonna have to fight fire with fire tonight in his match with Sullivan and then Ric Flair completely destroys his throat mid promo. Who will walk the arm and Hogan you will know once and for all. Flair tells Hulk Hogan that Roddy Piper's coming for him and Flair also says he's going to Kevin Green's house for a party. Keep in mind that Green is supposed to be the arch nemesis of horseman Steve McMichael. David Sammartino then took on Dean Malenko. David only had two matches during this WCW run with the other being a dark match against jobber Rex King during the WCW Saturday night tapings. This match here was absolutely brutal. David stumbled around the ring and his timing was off on quite a few occasions. And have a look at the finish while keeping an eye on David's shoulders. We are in the house. Hollywood is here. Ooh, Holland look at this. Here. Rolling the shoulders. It was a one Dean Malenko was seething after the match. He grabs his belt and he walks away. Bischoff and DiBiase give up their seats for Bobby Heenan, Mike Tanay, and Tony Schiavone. And Eric admires a bootleg NWO shirt as the first 60 minutes of Nitro comes to an end. The unopposed point goes to Nitro this week. The Roddy Piper replay and the David Sammartino match we really could have done without, but the rest was good, especially the opening matchup. Raw kicks off with a Vader vs Steve Austin match while WCW Nitro presents Jerry Flynn vs Ice Train. Bret Hart comes out to cut a promo before the match on Raw. And Brett says he should be standing in the ring right now, the WWF champion. The hitman says that things have changed since he's came back to the WWF. You don't know who your friends are and you don't know who your enemies are. And there's just no rules anymore. 
Brett sends a message to Sid, Shawn Michaels and Steve Austin. If there's no rules in the World Wrestling Federation then that's fine with Brett. The hitman will do what it takes to be the number one guy once again and Brett says he'll start by entering the 1997 Royal Rumble match. Brett then says he's gonna be just like Shawn Michaels tonight, he's gonna sit at the commentary table and call this Vader vs Steve Austin match. Vader and Austin make their entrances and our match gets underway. Steve Austin talks some trash to Bret Hart and Bret says he's just minding his own business, but I'm distracted by the fact that someone actually bought a 1996 Mark Henry shirt. Vince tells Bret that it wasn't entirely Sean's fault that Bret lost his match at In Your House, and Bret sarcastically says, no, I just ran into a tree or something last night. Austin does his best to dodge Vader at the beginning of the match but Stone Cold gets caught and Vader delivers some of those signature forearms. Vader then hits a big clothesline and Stone Cold isn't looking good here in the opening moments of this match. Jerry Lawler says Brett won't interfere tonight because he wants nothing to do with this tough man competition going on inside the ring and Brett says Lawler doesn't know a thing about being tough. The crowd comes alive when Austin hits a Luthez press and they go totally nuts when Stone Cold beats Vader so bad that the big man falls out of the ring. Stone Cold follows up with a diving double axe handle and then we come back from a commercial break where Vader has regained control on the outside. The match turns into a wild brawl and the fans love it. The two men fight in the audience for a brief moment and Austin manages to turn things around but back inside the ropes Steve Austin runs into a tree called Vader. The big man then goes upstairs to end the match but Stone Cold gets up and he punches his opponent right in his little Vader bombs. The referee lets it slide and a series of punches from Stone Cold again get the crowd fired up. But Vader overcomes the onslaught by dumping Austin out of the ring. Bret Hart decides it's time to strike. He chops Austin down and a sharpshooter gets applied on the outside. The referee then calls for the bell and the match is ruled a no contest. Vader attacks Brett too but once the hitman deals with Vader he goes right back to Stone Cold and we see another sharpshooter. Brett was fed up of people interfering in his matches and Brett decided to start fighting back by doing the exact same thing. This match was really good though and it's another fine example of how fans were really getting behind Stone Cold Steve Austin. Jerry Flynn makes his Nitro debut here against Ice Train, coming off a hot 1995 WWF run where he didn't win a single match. Jerry gets in some early offense but Train hulks up before almost taking Flynn's head off with a great clothesline. Old Jerry Lynn with an F has to take a timeout afterwards. Ice Train's pre lockup dancing totally throws Jerry off his game. A Northern Lights suplex gets followed up with a body slam and Train hits a splash afterwards as this one is pretty much all but done with, why bother? Train tries to knock the mullet right off Flynn with a clothesline in the corner but Jerry gets a boot up at the opposite side of the ring and the crowd goes mild. Jerry then hits a clothesline and he performs a version of Savio Vega's wheel kick in the corner that doesn't look nearly as good. Flynn tells the fans to shut up afterwards and look here, doesn't he look like Goyman? Flynn hits a reverse heel kick that makes Train crumble to the mat. He then lands a few kicks but Train again begins hulking up and Flynn gets floored with a headbutt. A jumping clothesline puts Flynn to the mat and Train makes Flynn submit by applying an ankle lock. Some real hard hitting moves during this one but I'm giving the point to WWF Raw. The crowd was on fire for Stone Cold Steve Austin and it made the match way more exciting. Also, Tony Schiavone announced that Starcade 96 had sold out but tickets are now available for an NWO pay per view that's happening in January. The name of the show is NWO Sold Out and Tony isn't happy that he had to promote an NWO event while on commentary. Six, Hall and Nash interrupt Ice Train's victory celebration and the outsiders don't want to wait until Starcade and they challenge the Faces of Fear to a match tonight on Monday Nitro. This is all fine and dandy except the commentary team already announced the match earlier in the show. Bobby Eaton vs Rey Mysterio is up next on Nitro while a tag team match takes place on Raw. Diesel and Razor vs The Godwins. Let's just get the pain over with here. The WWF crowd chants NWO as the fake Razor throws his fake toothpick at Phineas Godwin. 
Phineas replies by spitting in the air, catching it in his hands, and throwing it right back at the bad guy. Dirty bastard. Razor looks at Phineas as if to say there was really no need for that, mate. The two finally lock up and Razor applies a side headlock. Phineas whips his opponent into the ropes and Bogner almost loses his footing. The bad guy holds onto the ropes and Phineas nails a clothesline that sends Razor over the top rope. Back inside the ring, it's Phineas who applies a side headlock this time and Razor goes down after a body slam. Henry comes in and we see some double team action Godwin style. Henry applies a wrist lock, Razor gets out and he tags in big fakey cool Diesel. Diesel hits a knee strike before sending his opponent into the corner and hitting a big clothesline. Henry replies by whipping Diesel into the ropes and hitting a back elbow and then we get this mess right here. Bocce Ramon comes back into the match and he goes after the shoulder and arm of Henry Godwin. The audience doesn't care at all and the commentators are too busy talking about how Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels are actually way more similar than what they realise. Big Diesel's now back in the match and we're told that next week's main event will feature Bret Hart taking on the fake Razor Ramon, so at least we can put that old Bret gets a good match out of anyone theory to test. Henry starts fighting back and Diesel gets his head slammed on the mat followed by a clothesline. Phineas gets the lukewarm tag, and the hog farmers begin cleaning house. Razor tries to hit a razor's edge, but Henry grabs him from behind and a slop drop gets delivered. Henry isn't the legal man though, so Diesel comes in and he hits a jackknife on Phineas. Razor pins Phineas and it's all over. They won't do it, so I will. Apologies for this match. Bobby Eaton vs Rey Mysterio, what a strange yet kind of fascinating combination. Rey starts it off with a few quick arm drags but Eaton stops his opponent with a punch to the jaw. Rey then gets thrown up in the air and he crashes hard on the canvas and Bobby hits a backbreaker with some serious elevation. Eaton puts some pressure on Rey's shoulder as Tony Schiavone announces a Rey Mysterio vs Jushin Lager match that's gonna take place at Starcade. Ray slides out of the ring to catch his breath and Eaton misses an attack from the apron. With Eaton against the guardrail, Mysterio dives on his opponent and the crowd likes what they see. Mysterio and Eaton then try to get all fancy when coming back into the ring but that doesn't work out too well. Eaton then goes for a suplex but Ray counters it with a wheel kick. Ray claps his hands here to make some impact noise but he made it look very obvious. Ray makes up for it though with his follow up drop kick from the apron followed by a sit down springboard moonsault. Eaton still manages to kick out at 2. Eaton fires back with a clothesline, he then applies a chin lock and don't worry, Eaton's a professional, he won't do any more of these for the remainder of the match. Ray tries his best to fight out but Bobby nails Mysterio with a right hand followed by a body slam. We think Bobby's gonna hit the Alabama Jam next but he instead hits a diving knee drop. Eaton then goes upstairs once again but Ray wakes up and a nice hurricane runner from the middle rope ends the match. Mysterio wins via pinfall and Nitro wins the point. There were a few shaky moments in this one but it was still leagues above the Raw tag team match. <laughs> the boys ran out and stole a bunch of crayons to look like Sting tonight at Monday Nitro. Good job lads. I asked my Twitter followers to give this faction here a name. And we've got the Three Dudes with Attitudes, the Dub C Dubbers, Woman Crush Wednesday, Willie Crush Wednesday, Super WCW Bros 3, The Booty Boys, The Three Donkey Men, Skid Marks, We Can't Wrestle, American Males 2000, American Pie 7, Stifler Joins the NWO, and my favourite, Sergeant Craig Pittman's Little Privates. Also, <laughs> look at this dude right here. Never has one man been so embarrassed to be at a WCW show. Betty told his kids he was popping out for some milk. We've got the Taskmaster vs Arn Anderson next while WWF Raw gives us Psycho Sid and Shawn Michaels promos. Sid's still feeling the effects of the copious amounts of Scooby Snacks he ate last night at In Your House. McMahon! <laughs> and I'm not saying you have impressed the entire World Wrestling Federation. JR just made a- <laughs> Vince McMahon says that Sid has now defeated both Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and McMahon wants to know if there's anyone who can defeat Psycho Sid. Sid says no, he's the master and ruler, the belt is staying on Sid, and anyone who steps into the ring with the big man will go down. 
Vince wants to know how Sid feels about going into Sean's hometown for the Royal Rumble to defend the title against HBK, and Sid says he loves it, he lives for the adversity, and so it's gonna be a sweet victory for Sid when he walks into the Alamo Dome and defeats Shawn Michaels once again. McMahon says that Jose Lothario will be back in HBK's corner at the Royal Rumble, and Sid reminds Jose about what happened at Survivor Series. A warning is sent to HBK's mentor, stay at home and don't get involved. We then see HBK and… <laughs> what can we say really, it seems like Sean has seen some better days, doesn't it? Vince wants to know if Sean has considered the fact that he might get humiliated in front of his hometown at the Royal Rumble, and Sean replies while almost very nearly forgetting how to say his own name. The only thing is, our cricket Sean Michaels has been humiliated a number of HBK says Southern Texas is also the home of Jose Lothario, and the people there aren't too happy with what Sid did to Jose. Sean's gonna beat Sid for what he did at Survivor Series, and HBK will claim what's rightfully his in the process, the WWF Championship. When asked about In Your House, It's Time and how HBK cost Bret Hart the championship, Sean says he isn't going to come out and cry and whine like Bret Hart while making excuses. Sean says he's winning his title match at the Royal Rumble and as for Bret Hart, the hitman will never be like HBK and even if Hart wanted to be just like Shawn Michaels, he simply couldn't. Again, apologies, this is all over the place just like Sean's mental state at the time, but in saying that, it does add a little realism, I guess. You can really tell here though that the Bret vs Sean match was in the pipeline for WrestleMania. I know the WWE Yes Men of today who have podcasts like to say that that wasn't the case, but it's fucking clear as day to anyone who watches this stuff on a regular basis that Sean and Bret were gearing up for a match at Mania while Psycho Sid was acting as the stumbling block along the way. Before the Arn Anderson vs Kevin Sullivan match, we see clips of Chris Benoit and Woman in Germany. The couple have been out sightseeing and they're planning their next adventure. Benoit asks Sullivan if his life sucks at the moment. Chris has taken the most important thing the Taskmaster has, and now Kevin will have to get used to lonely nights at home. Benoit wants to know how it feels coming home to an empty house, how it feels to walk along the beach all alone, and Chris wants to know how Kevin Sullivan feels being a loser. Sullivan comes out and he screams at Shivani for the tape being aired on Nitro, like if it was fucking Tony who had the VCR under his desk, and after Double A makes his entrance, a wild brawl takes place on the rampway. Sullivan gets the upper hand and when Anderson goes for the DDT, Sullivan bites him in the side. Bobby Heenan says to just forget about the match as Sullivan throws a chair at Arn's face, and Anderson replies by swinging the chair but hitting the ring post. The fight gets in the ring briefly where Sullivan lays in a few punches, and then the two end up fighting in the audience. It's in the crowd where Anderson finally begins fighting back effectively, and Sullivan decides to back off and get back inside the ropes. Double A goes to work on Sullivan and the enforcer decides to whack referee Mark Curtis, and if that wasn't enough, Anderson hits Curtis with a DDT after getting a thumb to the eye. Kevin then hits his devastating double stomp on Anderson, Arn gets set up in the Tree of Woe, but Anderson gets out of this predicament by grabbing Kevin's little taskmasters while hanging upside down. The crowd goes nuts as Anderson signals for the DDT, but Dungeon of Doom members begin hitting the ring. The enforcer does well to keep the dungeon at bay, but it ends up being too much. Sullivan uses a wooden chair, and afterwards, Kevin scores the pinfall victory. I wasn't expecting too much out of this match, and it caught me by surprise. Good stuff here, and it's another point for WCW Nitro. Rick and Scott Steiner are in the arena and they want to go face to face with the man called Sting. Over on Raw, we've got Furnace and Lafon taking on TL Hopper and Dr. X, a match that's already gotten underway because Sid and Sean talk so much shit during their promo spots. Dr. X then, who is this mysterious masked man? It's Zip of the Body Donnas, or Tom Pritchard. Skip was now in ECW as part of the WWF ECW talent exchange and he'd never come back, so the geniuses at WWF have repackaged Pritchard as Dr. X. This would last for a few months. 
Anyway, we've got Furnace and Pritchard in the ring briefly before dirty white boy TL Hopper gets tagged in. Furnace ends up hitting a buttery smooth belly to belly suplex on the WWF's resident plumber. Doug Furnace then targets the wrist and arm of TL Hopper and Furnace eventually transitions from a bear hug into a spine buster. He then tries to apply a Boston Crab but the referee decides to count a pin attempt while Furnace tried to apply the hold. Doug then says fuck it and he tags out. The Fawn hits a few knife edge chops but Hopper counters a monkey flip attempt, slamming the Fawn to the mat face first. The evil Dr. X gets tagged in and he hits a nice gut wrench powerbomb that only scores a two count. And the Fawn then manages to counter a suplex with a quick snap suplex of his own. His double underhook suplex gets broken up by Dr. X and Furnace decides to take the masked villain out. This gives Phil the Fawn a chance to hit TL Hopper with his Cobra Clutch suplex and the match is over. Hard hitting where it needed to be. Furnace and LaFawn continue to impress in their WWF run. Good stuff. The Steiner brothers stand in the ring and they look to the audience. The stinger has to be somewhere and the Steiners want answers about what happened last week. After waiting around for what seemed like an eternity, the stinger shows up and he starts making his way to the ring from the audience. At the same time, the fake sting also makes his way to the ring and the fake sting holds the ropes open for the real sting to get inside. <laughs> this is going to get annoying. So fake sting puts his hand on the real sting's shoulder. The real sting doesn't take too kindly to this and so fake sting threatens the real sting with a baseball bat. The real sting produces a bat of his own and he pushes fake sting's bat to the ground. Both fake sting and real sting turn their backs to the Steiners offering a free shot but the real sting then hits a scorpion death drop on the fake sting. The Steiners then give the real sting his bat back as the commentary team say that this is a huge blow to the new world order. Sting attacking his doppelganger must mean that the icon is gonna fight for WCW but who knows. Sting gets out of the ring and the segment comes to an end and it's another point for WCW Nitro. The Milton Bradley Karate Fighters tournament comes to an end on Raw while WCW give us a Hollywood Hogan promo. Before the final of our illustrious tournament, we get a quick interview with Billy Gunn. Billy is taking on Bart Gunn in tonight's main event and Billy says he's going to prove tonight why he's the top gun. Billy again says he carried Bart during the whole run of the smoking guns and tonight Bart goes down. Right, in the ring we have Sable along with Mark Merrow and Triple H has decided to stand in the corner of one Jerry Lawler. Jim Ross says the winner of this contest will get crowned the Karate Fighters Champion. Ross introduces the competitors and Sable gets a good pop here. Sable's going with Tiger Ninja tonight while Jerry Lawler takes a cyber fist. Who's gonna win? Let's find out. Sable wins the tournament. Sable is king of the karate fighters. King tried to pummel Sable with Cyber Fist but Sable took everything and she came out on top. Lawler says that Sable cheated and he wants a rematch and Mark Merrow decides that that ain't gonna happen. Lawler takes out his anger on Marvelous Mark and Triple H gets in on the action. Goldust then runs in for the save but he knocks Sable over in the process. You can't write this stuff I swear to god. Goldust fights off Helmsley and Mero chases Hunter out of the arena. Goldust goes back to Jerry Lawler and Jerry says that the Bizarre One shouldn't be so worried about Hunter making a pass at Marlena last night because well, Goldust is, you know. Well, you know, you're... You're a... Jerry finally spits it out and he assumes that Goldust is... Well, have a listen. Uh, we, we might want to uh, be right back. Where? What? Aren't you? Goldust says no he isn't before Lawler gets levelled. Marlena then comes out of the ring and the Goldust theme music then plays in the arena. An absolutely crazy segment on Monday Night Raw but consider me sports entertained. The Hulkster better not talk a lot of nonsense here or he's doing the job to some toys on Raw. That doesn't work for him brother. Shivani calls Hogan vs Piper the match of the century and we're only a few weeks away from Starcade. The spotlight goes on Hollywood and Hulk says he saw Piper in the back. 
Hulk challenges Piper to come out right now and fight him, but the commentators say that everyone knows that the Hot Rod isn't in attendance tonight. After sending Vincent away to find Piper, knowing full well he isn't in the arena, Hulk goes on to say that with Piper's bad hip and Ric Flair's bad shoulder, the Hulkster could take on both men at the same time. Hulk waits for Piper to show up and to buy a little time, he makes Elizabeth kiss him on the cheek, she does so reluctantly. Hulk says Piper was a mid-carter before he stepped into the ring with Hogan in the 80s. Piper still doesn't come down, so Hogan gets DiBiase to also give him a little kiss on the cheek. Just kidding. DiBiase whispers in the Hulk's ear that Piper ran out the door as soon as Hogan walked into the building. And the Hulkster says, that's it, no more Mr. Nice Guy. At Starcade, Hulk's gonna tear Roddy limb from limb and Piper will be on the list of old broken down wrestlers who challenged Hogan. The segment ends with Hulk giving the fans what they want. He poses in the ring. Gonna get some heat for this one, I'm sure, but I'm just being honest. I thought the Karate Fighters segment was way better. It was so ridiculous that it was entertaining, and Hulk's appearance was just a way to get Hulk on TV. You know the last time Hulk had a match on Nitro? It was back in April. Time for our final matches, Raw presents Billy vs Bart in the Battle of the Guns, while WCW gives us a Starcade preview match, The Outsiders vs The Faces of Fear. I had to cover this Billy vs Bart match quite recently for a Billy Gunn video, so this one is still kind of fresh in my mind. The match starts off with Billy attacking his former tag team partner as Bart was getting into the ring. Billy gets a boot up back inside the ropes that stuns Bart, but Bart fires back with a clothesline that only gets him a two count. We come back from a commercial break and we see Bart Gunn's wife in the audience. McMahon says that Billy's wife is here too tonight, and they have to witness this family fight happening inside the ring. Billy chokes Bart in the corner before slapping him around for a bit. Bart tries to fight back on the mat, but Billy Gunn applies a chin lock. That's strike one. Billy lets go of the hold and he hits a neckbreaker while Bart's wife looks on from the audience. Bart then takes some punishment in the corner before Billy hits a snap mare, followed by chin lock number two. Again, Billy releases the hold, and Bart's able to finally fire back by performing a stun gun on Billy. And that's it folks, that's the end of the match. Billy doesn't move after taking the stun gun and we get around 4 minutes of Billy laid out on the mat while the family rushes into the ring to check the damage. Billy needed time off and this angle was done to explain Billy's time away from TV. It's quite a shame too because Billy was starting to come into his own a little but he had to take a few months off here. Paramedics come into the ring and they put Billy on a stretcher and that was the end of Monday Night Raw. Because the Outsiders are also going to battle the faces of fear at Starcade, we should fully expect a run and finish here. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, in my opinion, rank high on the Ming Manly meter. Not quite Harlem Heat levels, but definitely up there. It starts off with Hall and Ming battling inside the ropes while Nash fights the Barbarian on the outside. Nash manages to trip up Ming and this allows Hall to hit a clothesline. Everyone on the ground level in the audience is standing up for this one. Hall tries to finish it early, but the Barbarian breaks up an Outsider's Edge attempt. Nash makes Barbarian pay for his sins with a big boot. The match is given absolutely no time to settle as the Dungeon of Doom's Big Bubba hits the ring. We think he's going to attack Hall and Nash, but no, Bubba goes after Ming and it's made clear that Bubba is now a member of the NWO. Kevin Sullivan and Conan hit the ring as the referee throws the match out. More Dungeon of Doom members come down to fight before the giant makes his way down the entranceway, followed by Six, Wall Street, Vincent and Buff Bagwell. More WCW guys come down and we learn that Scott Norton has also joined the NWO after he attacks Ice Train before going on to attack more WCW guys inside the ring. David Sammartino is here <laughs> and for some reason he's attacking WCW guys. The crowd really pops when Sting makes an appearance. Arn Anderson grabs Sting and the icon nails double A. This makes Steve McMichael attack the Stinger along with Rey Mysterio, but Sting takes care of both men before leaving the ring. Sting didn't touch a single member of the NWO here, and the commentators are left confused by Sting's actions. The tag match was absolutely nothing to write home about, but the brawl between WCW and NWO was fantastic. 
we have new NWO members and the mystery of Sting continues to intrigue. It's a point for WCW Nitro. Nitro wins again this week after the WWF had such a strong start with Austin vs Vader. The structure of WWF shows has been a real problem so far with their one live, three taped formula where mid-carders and main eventers get distributed throughout four shows. This subsequently means that we end up with quite a few mid-card matches in the final Raw segments. Raw is still definitely on the right path, but Nitro is still an overall more entertaining wrestling program, to me anyway. You may think differently, and that's fine. That's what makes pro wrestling so fun. Our overall scores are 21 points to Raw, 33 points to Nitro, and we have had 8 ties. Fans continue to choose WCW Nitro over the WWF in the television ratings. Nitro scores a 3.2, while Raw scores another 2.3. Next week, Bret Hart faces the fake Razor Ramon in the main event of Raw, and Raw manages to secure their lowest television rating of the whole Monday Night War. We hit rock bottom next week guys, looking forward to it. You may say it's because of the holidays, but Nitro still keeps a strong rating with Eric Bischoff in a kilt. I hope to see you all next week, thank you so much for watching, and take care. A big shout out to my supporters over on Patreon who help keep this channel and reliving the war going on. Neil and Bongo joined up at the Hall of Fame tier recently, and it's thanks to these guys that you see reliving the war every week. So thanks to Neil, thanks to Bongo, and thanks to everyone else on Patreon for your continued support.